everybody. Good to see you out after uh, Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a great time. Hope you got to spend time with friends and family and all of that. Um, I want you to bear with me tonight. Uh, had a rough week, but I'm okay. Uh, I believe that scripture that Paul said, in my weakness he is made strong. So I'm standing on that. And I was sitting here thinking about, you know, because I want to jump back to a, a one scripture that I pulled out of last week. And it's not because I'm ornery or anything like that, but it was the one that when uh, David was talking to his wife, Mika, and uh, talking about being undignified. And he said, I'll be more undignified. But I was thinking about, you know, that. And I was going to tell you all, um, you still got a month before this year's gone. A whole month to be undignified for Jesus. And, I, and I, I'm not talking about like streaking or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. Just, to, just let yourself go in praise. Get bold. Somebody asks you to pray, don't say, I'll pray, and then lie about it and not do it. I mean, take the opportunity when you'll say you're going to pray. Just say, why don't we just do it right now? Let me just say a little. Because it's only going to cost you a minute of your time, and you're going to join faith with somebody's need. Because you know he answers prayer. So be bold. Be tenacious. Just be undignified if you have to be. But we got lots of opportunity. We got like another, what, 32 days left? Including tonight. Tonight's not over yet. But anyway, God like just dropped something in me. And I thought, why not now? Because a lot of times uh, we want to like share something and at the end of the year. It gets, it, it's, it's, you know, like our Christmas program and all that's like crazy. Uh, but I've never been one big on like closing out a year with a new prophetic word for the new year coming unless God released speak something to me and I know that there's ministries all the way from the hood all the way to television preachers that always has a word for the year you know and I ain't one of those wait a minute I hung out in the hood a little bit but... <laughs> all right now but God said what's the new year coming 2020 I'm like saying, Lord, I didn't know I'd, I'd ever make it this far. <laughs> I used to think, man, when the year 2000 comes, I'm going to be old when I was a kid, you know. And the year 2000 came and went, and I watched grandkids growing up. My goodness, God's good to us, isn't he? We got a lot to be thankful for. And he said, what's that year? And I go, 2020. He said, what is 2020 to you? And I, and I kind of like jumped over the political stuff and all that. And I went right to sight. 2020. He said, yes. That's it. He goes, you talk a lot about people seeing me. About seeing the effects of the wind of the Spirit. Being able to see the kingdom of heaven. And you know you can't see the kingdom of heaven unless you've been born again. But he said, but that's what I would do want to do that's what i desire to do with my people so that they have 2020 vision when it comes to my vision for them my hope for them my future for my people and he goes and, and i want you to say something that you're not accustomed to saying and that kind of got me for a second, because I'm big on saying, you know, quoting the scripture even and saying, forgetting those things that are behind, we press toward the mark. And that's true, because what that's saying there is you don't let your past drag you down and hold you back. But I'm going to tell you what God just showed me. He said, with hindsight, you have a lot of experience, and your life just didn't happen by chance. Even the bad decisions you make, once you surrender to me, I'll turn it around for the good because I'm the God that turns the bad to the good. I'll take your defeats and I'll make them victories for you. 
It was me who t took a killing tree and made it a tree of life. I turned a graveyard into a garden. What will I do for you? And I want people to have the hindsight to learn and understand not to repeat those things that are in their past, but to grow off of them because they're a foundation for your future. And, and I want you all to hear this too, because wherever you take it, you might be the one that broke a generational curse in your family. You might be the one turning around your whole bloodline and agree with Joshua, ask for me in my house, my whole house. We will serve the Lord. You might be that one. But think about this. There's a legacy that you're going to leave. I don't care where you're at in your life. I don't care how young or out, how old. Hey, Dave, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. <laughs> Whatever you do and however far you go, you're going to create another foundation because what happens is your ceiling becomes the next generation's foundation. They're going to stand upon the things that you did. This, this race that Hebrews talks about, we, they're watching, they're cheering us on because they know, because there was one time in the heavenlies that they were in this race and they had to pass that baton and that their ceiling became somebody else's foundation to build off of. That's why it says, run the race. Run like you never ran before. Do it with all your might. You know that runners can get pretty undignified too. You know that? I had to get it in again. But we have to excel. We have to go. We have to make step with purpose. Because if we are living in the kingdom and we recognize that, we know that the kingdom of God is within us. And we walk with purpose. We are taking His kingdom on this planet Wherever we go, we are establishing kingdom rule here on planet earth. We are fulfilling thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Don't you, don't you, don't you know that you're the body of Christ? Yes. And if Jesus is going to do something, guess what? When you go somewhere, don't you go in your body? Well, that's what Jesus does too here on planet Earth. He goes in you. He uses His body to go places on planet. We are His hands. We are His feet. We are the hope for a future. Talk about despair. He turns that despair into hope. He drives out the insanity, anxiety, and depression. You gotta go because you gotta give way to love and joy and peace and a sound mind. A sound mind. Because all that crazy panic and that fear that comes upon us is not of God and He'll drive that out if you get in His presence and He'll restore to you a sound mind. And what that does, it gives you the ability to see what's really going on. Because when you're blinded with fear, that spirit of fear, you can't see nothing except for the thing that's got you bound, that's got you in its claws, and you can't go nowhere or do anything. I didn't know I was going to be able to do this tonight. <laughs> Woo! But He wants you to break free because your enemy, that's all He's got to use. And the lies that He... Per, 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 there we go again. We have that. That's right. Right there. <laughs> that's all He has. Look at it this way. Your enemy, all He has is one big mouth. And when it moves, it's lying. That's all it does. So don't listen to it no more. Listen to the promises of God. Listen to what the Word of God says. Listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. Listen to where the Spirit of God is leading and then follow. And when you step, move in Him. Don't go anywhere. We've been talking about David. Do you know that when their women and children was taken by the enemy, David's mighty men was ready to go, but he hadn't heard from God. He wouldn't move until he heard from God because he wasn't going to go one step. Unless the presence of God went with him. That's what the presence of God meant to him. It was so important to stay in the present 
will and mind of God that he wouldn't go. He said, do your best. If you want to take me out, go ahead, but I ain't going until I hear from my God. And you telling a bunch of mighty men that? Ooh. But he made a promise, and it was true. They would recover them all, and they did. Think about that. Think about the presence of God more important than anything. And do you know that when you walk in step with the Spirit and you're obedient to the Word of God, that's going to put you right in the middle of righteousness. It's going to put you right in the middle of your God. Who is your righteousness? He's your breastplate, baby. He's your everything. He's your helmet. He's your sword. He's your covering. He's your truth. Your feet is covered with the gospel. That's called beautiful feet from where I come from. Got good looking feet, baby. But you plant yourself right in his righteousness. And you know what righteousness is? It's right standing. Right standing with Him. And when you're in Him and with Him, you're at the right place at the right time to do what you were created to do. Listen to this. You lived your whole life to get to this moment right now. And all you're ever going to have in all of eternity is right now. Now faith is. You get that? That's a powerful thing right there. If you got that mindset, listen to this. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. And I'm going to be glad in this day, today, right now. Say that with me. Right now. <laughs> because that's what it is. Right now. Eternity locked into right now. Every step we make. You gotta live in the present. You gotta move in the present. And God wants you to see where you're going. There is no horizons in His land. There is no sunrise and sunset. There is no nighttime. There's only day because He is the day. That's why it's called the day of the Lord. There's no yesterdays, todays, and tomorrows where He is. He's the eternal God and He is the light of His city. And there is no darkness there. There's no shadow of turning in Him. That's why He never changes. He's the eternal God and there is no one I said, there is no one like him. He deserves our praise. He deserves our honor. He deserves our foolishness. If we're going to be foolish, like Paul said, let's be foolish for the Lord. You get that? And because he is the eternal God, and he sees our yesterdays, our todays, and our tomorrows, he can give us 2020. He can give us hindsight. That's why he, if God speaks prophetically into someone's life and he's using a vessel to tell somebody else, I know where you've been. I've known what you've been through. I was right there with you. And all of a sudden, they're like, whoo, because they're not hearing the voice of the messenger. They're hearing the voice of a God that is an eternal God that knows your yesterdays. You know what that's called in the Bible? That's a, that's a word of knowledge. And then it brings it into the present. And that prophetic word begins right here and now. And he starts saying, this is what, where you're at today. And this is what I want to break from you. And this is what I want to do to your life. And this is what I want to do to illuminate you so that you have sight. So that you have a life. You see, he's into giving you a better life. Well, sometimes anything is better from where some of us were. He wants to bring you, let me say it this way. He wants to bring you into the abundant life. Abundant living that is extravagant, that is over the top, there's, where there's more than enough. God is always the God of more than enough. That's why He pours into your cup until it starts overflowing. That's why He fills your vessel until it starts oozing out. 
And when you start oozing out God, you're oozing out Jesus. You're oozing out the anointing. You're oozing out the power that breaks chains and heals sickness, and liberates people, brings them into life, spreads around forgiveness all over the place because our God is a caring, compassionate, loving God. And He wants His children to understand that's what He wants for all of us. He wants us to see that, not just in the physical, in the spiritual. And if you're ever going to see it in the physical, you got to see it in the spiritual first so that you can begin to proclaim the Word of God. This is what God is doing. This is what God wants to do in your life. And you begin to speak to the now. Woo, that's, that's the word of wisdom because it will move into the future and says, if you do this, and if you do that, and if you surrender, and if you will just humble yourself before me, if you'll just humble yourself, this is what I'm going to do for you. And God is not a liar. He keeps His word. He has never lied and he never will. Remember, the enemy is the one who lies. If he starts talking into your head, you don't amount to nothing. Remember all that stuff. That's all your fault. That all that victimization is because of you. You are. He's lying. You know what you do? Pick up your shield. That's one of the pieces of armor. And go like this. Go ahead. Grab your shield and put it out and say, talk to the shield, devil. Shut up. All right? No more fear. If you shut the devil up, the fear has to go. And when faith, when fear leaves, guess what comes in its place? Faith. When faith shows up, then it, you begin to see and hear, and you're, oh my goodness, he loves me. That's the thing about having that intimate relationship with a loving God. And you see, it's all about the love. Faith isn't even important. What does the love chapter in, in, in Corinthians 13 say? If, if you got faith that can make the mountain jump and you don't have love, it don't mean anything without love. Everything has purpose with love because it's about that love relationship. And God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him, it's the everlasting life. That's the promise that God has given us. Oh, what did David say? You know, if I will humble. Myself. He said, I will humble myself. I will humble myself in my own sight. What does the Lord say? that He who humbles himself in the sight of the Lord in due season. That's just like that giving thing. In due season, God will lift them up. Because if, if, if you're proud, you ain't got nothing coming from the Lord. If you walk in arrogance and you're proud, and whoop, 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 you know. He ain't got nothing coming. He resists. The Bible says he resists the proud. But he gives grace. Anybody know what grace is? Oh, we can't even, we can't even talk about it. Let me spell it for you. You want me to spell grace for you? J-E-S-U-S. -S. That's the greatest gift of grace that God ever gave the human race. And because of His Son, we now stand in holiness. We stand in righteousness. We stand in peace. We stand in victory. We stand in eternal life. Because He overcame, I overcome. Because He lives, I live. Because He is a victor, I'm a victor. Woo-wee! Telling you, man. Okay, I'm not going to touch this one tonight. We're just going to leave it where it is. And... I'm just feeling right now that if you're struggling with any of the things that I just talked about, it's, fear has got you hemmed in. Anxiety, panic, depression, or anything right now, the answer, there's only one answer. And it's 2 plus 2 equals Jesus because He's the answer to every problem you have. And so in that place, instead of focusing upon the thing that has you I don't care if it's sickness in yourself or it's a relationship or sickness in one of your family members or whatever's going on. I want you to put Jesus right in the middle of it and begin to look at Jesus. If there's things that have torn your family apart, 
Put that whole situation in God's hands. And then say, God, I need your wisdom. Remember what I just said about wisdom. I need 2020 for what's coming in the future. I need 2020 now because I need to see your plan. I need to see where I need to walk. Because as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. And if you begin to walk with Him, His kingdom will be established in your life. And then it's going to invade everywhere that you go. And His, what's that old Hebrew Basar, we establish the kingdom of God wherever we go. And you know what the amazing thing is about the kingdom of God? It's a kingdom of light. It dispels the darkness. It dispels the helplessness and the hopelessness. It drives out the fear. Every demonic demon of hell has to flee. Just at his name spoken in faith. They got to go. Walk in faith. Walk in victory. Be an overcomer. And surrender yourself to God. And live an extravagant life in Jesus. Do it for the Father. God bless you all. We do have a communion. It might be a while after this. Come on, Audrey. So as you come tonight, receive of the things that God has done for you. Remember that His body was broken that we might be made whole. His blood was shed so that we might have a sinless, righteous life. The sinner and the sin was dealt with through the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. God bless you all.